I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. This is about Dudleyus, California native succulents that grow along the coastline on steep cliff sides. Recently, I was interviewed by The New Yorker about the recurring thefts of Dudleyus from the Northern California coast. There's a link to the article on my website, DeborahLeeBaldwin.com. The writer wanted to know more about these native succulents and their likelihood of survival out of the wild. It seems that in Korea, China, and Japan, succulents are hugely popular among housewives, students, and other residents of small spaces. Dudleyas, related to Echeverias, which are rosette succulents from Mexico, are collectible novelties that sell for up to $100 a piece. Some say much of their appeal is their resemblance to lotus flowers. Well, no plant, succulent or otherwise, is free for the taking, even from public land. Yet poachers are flying into San Francisco, renting cars, and stopping by Home Depot for packing boxes on their way to California's rocky ocean cliffs. They slither through mud, dislodge boulders, rip silvery succulents from near vertical perches, then scurry off to a post office. Unfortunately, by the time the poachers are caught, the damage has been done. It's senseless, I told the New Yorker. Instead of flourishing where people can see them, those stolen Dudleyas will just turn squishy and rot. It's not easy to replant a Dudleya, even in its own habitat. Dudleya farinosa, like many species, requires near vertical rocky hillsides, plenty of sun but not too much, and no summer water. It also likes moist ocean air. Most noticeable in species such as Dudleya bretonii and Dudleya pulverulenta, long radiating flower stems are striking and last from late spring into summer. By summer's end, after months without rainfall, a Dudleya's oldest lower leaves will have dried. They still cling to the stem, protecting it from heat, sun, and desiccation. The plant hunkers down, goes dormant, and folds its upper leaves over its vital core. It's tempting to try and revive a sleeping Dudleya, yet if you water it, you risk it rotting. Dudleyas grown by nurseries fare much better in residential gardens. Plant them in a rock wall or at an angle in gritty, fast-draining soil like the decomposed granite so water drains away from their roots. It's best not to grow Dudleyas in pots because water can pool around their stems. Inland, protect them from hot afternoon sun in summer. I suggested that the New Yorker reporter interview Dudleya expert Kelly Griffin, succulent product development manager for Altman Plants, the largest grower of succulents and cacti in the United States. Griffin, a renowned breeder of aloes and agaves, is also an avid Dudleya breeder. I followed him around his own garden north of San Diego while he discussed the Dudleya cultivars he's testing. They're large, lush, floriferous, and full of vigor. Should the unthinkable happen and native Dudleyas become rare, Griffin's hybrids are certain to live on in cultivated gardens. Lots of Dudleyas over here. That one's got a little issue, but most of them are doing pretty good. But this is typical Brittany. Brittany has the red bracts, uh -huh. so they're red yeah. on the... Sure. This is a neat cross that I made. This is Brittany cross with pulverulenta. Oh, it's gorgeous. Look at the size of it. Isn't it amazing? Last year it had 13 flower stalks. This year it had 14. You know, your Mendelian genetics. Oh, red's going to dominate over yellow. Well, huh. in the case of Dudleyas, it doesn't seem to, at least in this case. They mix it up for you, don't they? They do, and they don't make it easy. 